Oh my god, one of the longest problems ever. So we have to find the polynomial, right? With the zeros, 2, 4 plus square root of 5, and 4 minus square root of 5. Now, this is very important because more often than not, when you're doing problems, you're not always going to get perfect zeros. Um, you're not always going to get, you know, the zeros are 2, 3, and 5. All right? More often than not, you're going to have to do the quadratic formula or completing the square. Where you're going to get these irrational zeros for your uh, function. So it's very important for you to know if I if give me zeros, how do they, what do they make our, uh, you know, our equation look like, or our function look like? Well, the first thing we need to do is how do we write these as factors? Well, a quick little step. If I was to say find the zeros, we get to a point like this, and I'm just going to pick some rent. This is like an extra thing, and we get to a point when we factor. We get to a point like this where we're trying to find the zeros. Then we say x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 5 equals 0, right? Quotation Horton, please report to the main office. Quotation Horton, please report to the main office. So you get x equals 4, and you subtract 5 on both sides. You get x equals negative 5, right? Then you say the 0 is 4, and the 0 is negative 5. So you go from 4, and then when you write as a linear factor, it becomes negative 4. And when you write as negative 5, it becomes a positive 5. So what we need to do is we're given our zeros. We're given x equals 2, x equals 4 plus square root of 5, and x equals 4 minus square root of 5. So what we want to do is we need to, before we can write it as a polynomial, we need to be able to write it as a, le as a set of linear factors. So I'm going to say my function f of x equals x minus 2 times x minus 4 plus square root of 5 times x minus 4 minus square root of 5. Then, if you guys remember, what we do is, for finding our factors, we need to multiply them together. And, wow, that looks like that can be very dangerous, right? We got a lot of terms there. A lot of things are going on. Um, so before I do that, I'm just going to kind of hold my breath here and say, well, I could do distributive property. That is something I could do. Why don't I give it a shot? Why not? What's it going to hurt? So I do x minus 2, and let's do distributive property with this. So it's x minus 4 minus square root of 5. x minus 4. Bethany and Gooding, please report to the office. Bethany and Gooding. Oh my God, please stop. Sorry, it's a little frustrating. So now the next thing that we're going to do is. Teachers interested in benefits enrollment, please report to the library in the next. 30 minutes. Teachers interested in benefits enrollment, please report to the library in the next 30 minutes. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I didn't just tell you to do distributive property for no reason. The reason why it's so important is because look at these x minus 4s. These are exactly the same. So what I can do is I can group these together. And what's so important about grouping them together is we're going to notice something's happened. Let's say for instance, this is for fun, a equals x minus 4. And let's say for fun, b equals square root of 5. Well, then I'll have a minus b times a plus b. Suppose I should substitute those in, right? Well, if I substitute those in, guess what this gives us? This give us, gives us a difference of two squares, which is awesome. And the reason why it's so awesome is because that eliminates our middle terms. I now have, if I was to multiply these, I'd get a squared minus b squared. I don't have any of that middle stuff anymore. So this is awesome. By distributing the property and grouping them, I now can do difference of two squares. So I still have this x minus 2 here. But now I can say this is x minus 4 squared minus square root of 5 times square root of 5, which would be square root of 25, which would be minus 5. And that's sweet. Now I have to do distributive property here. So I distribute the x to both of these terms. And I get x times x minus 4 squared. And then I get a negative 2. I'm oh, sorry. x times x minus 4 and negative 5x. Then I get a negative 2 times x minus 4 squared. And then I also get a negative 2 um, times negative 10. 
Remember, you got to multiply both of those by all the terms, do a little factoring. Or, I'm sorry, not factoring, but foiling, right? All right, it gets a little messy. Um, I need to make sure I do x minus 4 squared. So x minus 4 squared Okay, multiply that by x, I'm going to get x cubed, then I'll get minus 8x squared plus 16x minus 5x. Sorry, this still all equals f of x. Um, and then I have negative 2 times x squared is a negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 8 is a positive. 16x and negative 2 times 16 is a negative 32 and guys a negative 2 times negative 5 is going to give me what a positive 10 right thank god i wrote down the correct answer and did this previously before i made my video wow look at all those terms this is <laughs> cool um so, whew, that's a big polynomial. Well, what I can do, guys, I've finally multiplied everything out. Now let's just go ahead and combine our um, like terms. And this is not, geez, oh man. X times X squared is X cubed. My apologies. Uh, so I can, can now combine my negative X, X squared, my negative 2X. So my final function is F of X equals X cubed minus 10x squared plus 27x. Where do I get 27x? I combine a 16x, a 16x, and this negative 5x. Minus 22, and that's going to be my function. And one thing you can also notice, this function can always be multiplied by a factor of a. All right, um, but you can always remember you can always factor out numbers, you know, divide out numbers. But here's going to be my initial function. It's going to be of that sort. So that is how you find the polynomial when you have zeros like that.